This is problem 2, 130. And we will calculate some parameters for different damped system. The free vibration response of an electric motor of weight 500 newtons mounted in two different types of foundations are shown. We like to first describe the nature of the damping provided by the foundation and second calculate the parameters of the systems. That means the spring and the damping coefficient. Calculate also the natural frequency of the system and the damped natural frequency of the electric motor. First, let's see what we are given. We are given those two curves and then we are given the weight. With the weight, we can calculate the mass. The mass is the weight over the gravity. The weight is 500 newtons. The gravity is 9.81, so the mass is 50.97 kilograms. Let's look at the curve and try to find out the nature of the damping. You see that the, in the first curve, the amplitude it decreases in an exponential form. That means that the damping is viscous damping. As you recall, the amplitude is multiplied by an exponential to the negative zeta omega n T. In the second case, we have a linear decreasing function for the amplitude. And that means that the damping is column damping. So we have that the nature of the damping is the first one is a viscous damping and the second is column or dry friction damping. Let's now calculate the spring constant and the damping coefficient of the foundation in each case. Let's start with the viscous damping, which is the case A. And for that case, we will use the concept of logarithmic decrement, which is defined as the logarithm of two consecutive amplitudes. In this case, I could use one amplitude at the beginning, which is the initial condition, and the second one, or I could use also between the second and the third one. So we just have to use two consecutive amplitudes, and we will get the same value. As you see, this is 8 over 4, which is logarithm of 2, which is equals to 0.6931. And then we can calculate the zeta. Remember the formula that relates the logarithmic decrement with zeta is logarithmic decrement over the square root 2 pi square plus the logarithmic decrement square. And then substituting the value for the logarithmic decrement give me a zeta equals 0 0.1097. Now, in order to relate zeta to the other variables that we want, which is the spring constant and the damping coefficient, I need to calculate the natural frequency. Or, in this case, the system is vibrating to the damped frequency. So, what we read here in the curve is the damped period which is 0 0.2 seconds. So the damped frequency will be 2 pi over 0 0.2, which gives me a value of 31.42 radians over second. With that value and having the zeta, we can calculate the natural frequency. Remember that the equation that it defines damped frequency is equals to natural frequency multiplied by the square root of 1 minus zeta squared. So I solve for natural frequency, which will be the damped frequency over the square root of 1 zeta squared. And zeta, we already found it, which is 0 0.1097 squared. That gives me the natural frequency, which is equals to 31.606 radians per second. And I always have to verify that my natural frequency is greater than the damped frequency, in which is the case. So we got the, we're just checking that our, all our values are correct, right? 
The definition of natural frequency is the square root of the constant of the spring divided by the mass. And so we can solve for the constant of the spring, which will be the natural frequency squared times the mass. And we already have the mass, so that value squared times 50.97, which is our mass, and that gives me the value of the k, which is 59.16 newtons over meter. So we have now the constant of the spring, and we are missing out now to calculate the damping coefficient of the foundation. Remember the definition of zeta is a damping coefficient divided by the critical damping. The damping coefficient will be equal to zeta times the critical damping coefficient, which is 2 square root of kn. If I input the values, is 0 0.10972 times the square root of the mass times the k, and that gives me a value for the damping coefficient of 353.28. The units are newtons times seconds over mass. We were able to get all the parameters from the system by the response. Anytime that we have an experimental curve of our system, we are able to determine the characteristics of our system. Let's do now the second curve, which is columned damping. We have to know that the system vibrates to the natural frequency, not to the damped frequency. In this case, when we read the period in the curve, that relates to the natural frequency. The natural frequency then will be equals to 2 pi over the period that I read in the curve. The period is 0 0.2. So in this case, the natural frequency is equals to 31.42 radians over second. And we go again with the definition of natural frequency, which is the square root of k over m. And we can solve for k. The k will be the natural frequency squared times the mass. We have both values. Let me input the values. And we get the constant of the spring equals to 5303.79 newtons over meter. Now we want to calculate the drag friction coefficient, right, the mu. And that relates to how does the amplitude decreases over time. The amplitude of motion is reduced by an amount of 4 mu n over k for two consecutive values of the amplitude. So in every cycle, the amplitude diminished that quantity. And in this case, and we read the value, how much the amplitude decreases in each cycle is two millimeters, which is equivalent to two times 10 to the, to the negative three meters. From here, we can solve for mu, which is the friction coefficient. That will be the amount the amplitude decreases in each cycle times the constant of the spring divided by 4n. n is the normal, remember, is equals to the weight. That will be equals to 2 times 10 to negative 3, constant of the spring divided by 4 times 500. The friction coefficient now has a value of 0 0.0503. This is the solution of the whole problem. We analyzed it. Two different types of foundation, one with viscous damping and the other with column damping. Just to make sure that we understood that in the viscous damping, the reduction of the amplitude in an exponential curve, and in the case of dry friction, we have that the amplitude decreases linearly. So it's important that in a viscous damping, the system vibrates with the damped frequency. And in the case of dry friction, the system vibrates at its natural frequency.